Imagine a time when men and women climbed in hiking boots with thin ropes meant for sailboats tied around their waists while pounding homemade pitons for protection and 5'9 was the cutting edge of difficulty. Personally, the thought of this terrifies me because I've been scared to death on climbs easier than 5'9 and that's with the benefit of modern gear like cam, sticky rubber, chalk, and thanks to the climbing gym and ability to even crank kinda hard. None of that really matters though, because rock climbing more often than not is a mental challenge. And for mortals like myself, it can be terrifying. And I want you to keep that in mind as we go back in time to an era when legends were forged with courage. In 1950, Royal Robbins was just another 15 year old punk kid from Los Angeles learning the ropes out at Stony Point. But just two years later, he would take those skills 115 miles due east to the San Jacinto Mountains and Takich Rock, where at 17 years old, he would cement his name in the history books forever by free climbing one of the hardest routes in the country. This is the story of the first 5-9. Open book. The main attraction was doing something which was considered hard. To understand the significance of the first 5-9, we need to briefly explore the history of the Yosemite Decimal System, a grading scale for rock climbs which, ironically, wasn't even developed at Yosemite. It was developed at Takeets. Randy Vogel and Bob Gaines sum it up nicely in their 1993 guidebook when they write, during the early 1950s, new climbs were constantly being added. The high concentration of difficult climbs led to the need for a better rating system. Up to this time, technical climbs were described as being either easy, moderate, or hard fifth class. So many routes of varying difficulty were being lumped together that the existing rating system was not very useful. As a result, Robbins and Don Wilson began devising a new rating system. When Wilt began work on his new guide, he, Robbins, and Wilson put their heads together and the modern decimal system was born. When a comprehensive new guidebook appeared in 1956, free climbs were rated the now familiar 5-0, 5-1, 5-2, etc. The top rating, 5-9, was assigned to the hardest routes and 5-0 was assigned to the easiest fifth class route. Climbs of certain difficulties at Takeets become the standards by which to rate new routes. Some informally referred to the new rating system as the Southern California or Wilts Sierra system, but the unassuming Wilts refused to attach his name to the system. About this time, Takeets local Mark Powell became one of the early Yosemite climbing bums and is credited by some with introducing the decimal system to the valley. In any event, Yosemite got credit for this innovation and by the early 1960s, the decimal system devised at Takeets became commonly known as the Yosemite Decimal System. In Chuck Wilt's 1973 guide, we can see that each grade from 5-0 to 5-9 was directly linked to a specific climb at Takeets. These are the routes that every climb in America would soon be compared to. Even back then, Chuck knew that the system was far from perfect when he wrote, In fact, the system is illogical, and all that can be said for it is that it serves a purpose regardless. In defense of the numbering, it is a historical fact that when the system was developed in the early 1950s, the rating 5-9 was used for the hardest climbs known at the time. By 1960, a number of ascents had been made that were clearly more difficult than the 5-9 standard. To avoid a reclassification and the necessary reorientation of climbers, and also with tongue-in-cheek, it was decided to set up a new class, 5-10, for these seemingly impossible climbs. Even more disastrously, in recent years, the inevitable 5-11 has evolved for a new group of clearly impossible climbs. Now that we have a little background, let's jump back five years before Robbins would take up residence as the reigning hard man of Takeets, to 1947, when two leaders of the Sierra Club Old Guard, John Mendenhall and Harry Sutherland, originally established open book in the style of their day, which was to free climb where they could and use aid where they couldn't. Mendenhall famously constructed wooden pitons out of two by four lumber for the intimidating 60 foot section with four inch wide crack on the second pitch which was impossible to protect with any other gear of that era. He then attached stirrups to the lumber and stepped into them to make upward progress. As it happens, the crux of open book is on the first pitch, and some folks believe that Mendenhall may have climbed that pitch entirely free, which would actually mean that he established the first 5-9. 
Even Robbins himself later thought this might be the case. Interestingly enough about the open book, it recently came to my attention that maybe John Mendenhall climbed the first pitch back in 1947 all free. I know he used, he used uh, wedges to stand on on the second pitch, but the first pitch is actually harder. So he may have, he may have done the hardest climb in the United States back in 1947. However, this has never been confirmed, and some folks who know a lot more than I do believe that's not quite the case, so this part remains a mystery. In any case, what's not disputed is that five years after the initial climb, a 17-year-old Royal Robbins showed up and climbed the entire route, bottom to top, completely free. The only protection he had in the 60-foot wide section were the leftover rotted pitons. Don Wilson and I went to the open book with the with, in 1952 with the specific purpose of climbing it free. We wanted to do that because we thought, well, this would be a nice feather in our cap. We'll show these guys, the older climbers. I led the first two pitches and Don led the third, uh, mainly because he was smarter than I was, so he got me to lead the second pitch. <laughs> well, on the second pitch, which is where you want the, uh, the number three cams or larger pitons, uh, there were two wooden wedges in place, which helped. I remember wrapping uh, the wooden wedges with a sling around them as if they were chalk stones. And mainly though, I didn't, I was careful to not fall. And you don't want to fall up there. Uh, especially you don't want to fall on wooden wedges because they might, they might not be as solid as they used to be. Stone master legend John Long really put Royal's climb into perspective in this obituary for Robbins in Outside Magazine when he said, So Royal goes up there with a white yachting rope and cheap-ass tennis shoes and leads the whole thing free. And he's got no protection except the few chunks of wood that the older guys left behind. No way that stuff was going to hold a fall. So Robbins basically free solos the first multi-pitch 5-9 in the United States. People today have no way of appreciating how extreme that is. In typical long fashion, there's a healthy dose of hyperbole in that statement, but the sentiment is true. Royal was a badass. So the next time you're shaking in your sticky rubber boots with a bomber number three Camelot just below you and a dynamic climbing rope attached to your cushy harness, take a deep breath and channel your inner Royal Robbins.